Good morning. Welcome to this, our worship in the community of St. Christopher's Episcopal Church in Springfield, Virginia. Welcome on this beautiful fourth Sunday in Easter. My name is Carrie Connors and I'm the priest in charge here and I welcome you to this gathering and I give you a special welcome if you're new here. I'm new too and I encourage you to enter any information you'd like to share into the chat so that I can reach out to you and get to know you a little better. We have other opportunities to worship in our community this week. On Wednesday morning, we have morning prayer at 930. And that's then followed by, for those who are able to stay online, followed by a time of just conversation and visiting. At 7 p.m. on Wednesday evenings, we have a lovely service of Compline, which are the remarkable prayers that take you into the night. So we encourage you to attend either or both of those. Uh, the links are sent out by our office. So if you'd like them, please let us know. Uh, they may come automatically in your email and feel free to share them with friends and with family. I also encourage you to, uh, to notice today that we will be blessing a new mission team. We are blessing our team that has been doing this work for the last year and will continue doing this work to videograph and produce our services. If you are interested in being part of that team, please reach out and let us know. It's a lot of fun. There's great learning um, among the group and collaboration. So uh, we encourage you to consider that as a ministry here in our midst. So as we center our hearts and minds and prepare ourselves for worship, I offer up the lovely opening prayer this morning, our lovely opening hymn this morning, hymn number 304.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son, Jesus, is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 4. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name do you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's now say together, responsively, Psalm 23, breaking at the asterisk. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul. And guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
The second lesson is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. By this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock 
one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I come to you with joy and meet my Lord forgiven, loved, and free in awe and wonder to recall his life laid down for me. Amen. What a beautiful hymn to begin with this morning. Good morning. Today, as we gather, we're hearing one of my absolute favorite readings, that of John chapter 10. I am the good shepherd. When I read this with children, which I do frequently, I begin by saying to them that when Jesus lived and walked and worked on this earth, people heard his teachings and were amazed. And they began to follow him. And one day they asked him, who are you? Who are you? And they re Jesus responded, I am the good shepherd. The, this image of Jesus as the good shepherd links him to one of our most ancient scriptural images of the messianic shepherd of the people of God that we heard described in the beautiful Psalm 23 this morning. The shepherd who lives among his creatures, whose entire being is dedicated to ensuring the safety of each and every one at the end of each and every day. Guiding, feeding, protecting, keeping the wolves away who would snatch at them and scatter them. Every year when we get to this place in the lectionary, I threaten to, and one year I'm gonna do it, fill the church yard with sheep. So that as we drive up to church that morning, we know this most essential of our teachings through all of our senses in three dimensions as they munch on our church lawn. How very appropriate to this Easter season, to this post-resurrection time, to see in images like this, not just Jesus, the historical person, but Christ as we are coming to know him, the son of God speaking to us God's truth. The truth that co the coming of the eternal word into humanity left no human being unaffected or behind. In taking human form, Christ became the embodiment of Matthew 25. Feed, visit, love, protect, and as you do this to each other, you do this to me. Our earliest Christological theolo theology emerged from these very tangible and real images, such as the shepherd, and from his words, words like knowing, eternal, abundant, from his actions, loving, eating, healing, protecting. In tangible ways, he taught us what God wants us to know, a most essential truth that is so essential, it seems simplistic, that we are known. We are known just as we are, that we are loved just as we are, that we are beloved. And that all that we do, all that we think, all of our actions should be in response to that amazing abundance of love. 
How remarkable to be able to say to someone who is struggling with their sexuality, you are made exactly as God wanted you to be and you are loved. How amazing to be able to say to someone who is struggling with an addiction, you are made as God wanted you to be and you are loved. When we make mistakes, when we hurt one another, forgiveness and reconciliation is part of that. For the good shepherd, just as in the story of the forgiving father, we are never lost and never cast aside. In the 1940s, uh, a remarkable movement got started in Christianity. It started in the Roman Catholic Church and quit pretty quickly moved to the Protestant tradition as well. It began in Spain. The movement is called Corsio de Cristianidad, or short course on Christian living. Some of you may have heard of Corsio weekends. It went on to become an international movement that is still very alive and well today. The intention of the movement was to create a three-day retreat in which you retreat from the world. You go into a tomb, in a sense, emerging on the fourth day after that deep immersion, better able, better equipped to live a committed Christian life day in and day out. I've never been able to attend a Corsio weekend, but I know people who have, and one of the things they shared with me seems pretty remarkable given our scripture today. The weekend begins as you arrive at the retreat center. At the door, you are met by someone who's assigned to you. That person takes custody of any schedules you keep, your medicines, your watch, and I'd imagine today, your phone. For the next three days, you are not supposed to know the need or want for anything. Your shepherd is completely attentive to your needs, appearing when it's time for you to take your afternoon medicine, bringing you what you need when you need it. They will guide you where you need to go, when you need to go there. They are in charge of caring for your every physical need. I find it remarkable that this key component of this time of learning about discipleship, of learning about what it means to live in a Christ way, begins with surrendering the worry about our own needs. Without worry about deadlines or time, one is allowed to just be present. Participants are cared for in ways most of us have not known in a long time, and some among us have never known. So if we stop and think about that for just a moment, we are most in touch with who Jesus wants us to be when we surrender. When we surrender our, our cycle of worry, when we surrender our addictions to keeping track and controlling, when we surrender that eternally present inner critic. And we live as a church. We live as a community called church, most authentically when our response to that love is to love others, even those whose choices we don't begin to understand even those whose struggles are not our own. Being loved means that we are grounded in such a way that when we are wrong, when the systems we're part of are wrong, we repent and we try again in a new way, in a resurrection way. Notice how many times in this scripture, knowing is part of the truth. We are known. Jesus is known. The Father is known. The truth is we were created in love to be signposts and activists of what it means to be known. 
First John reminds those of us who find Jesus as our chief way, as the cornerstone of our lives, that we must have as our central focus the dignity of every single person, just as Jesus brought into his presence anyone who sought him, excluding no one. In coming among us, in living as one of us, God dignified all humanity. I have other sheep. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. Martin Luther King gave his final sermon back in 1968 in the Canterbury pulpit of the National Cathedral right here in our backyard, aptly named for us today, remaining awake through a great revolution. He said, it's not wealth or education or even access to power that ultimately divides us. It is not seeing. It is not seeing the plight of our brother, of our sister. And we might add, it's not seeing the ways that injustice disproportionately affect some among us. Our country is in a time of being challenged to take up courageous acts of seeing, courageous acts of knowing each other. And no one, no one is better equipped to do that work than those of us who have been in touch with how completely and utterly we are loved. In this year ahead, I hope that we here in the St. Christopher's community can take up the work of knowing more deeply our own story as it's lived today and do the deep and important work of knowing the story of our community around us. To do that here at St. Christopher's, we've started a new group that's working on innovative ways of imagining how we communicate and reach each other. And we have a communications group that's working on how we tell our story, what that story is and how we share it across mediums. One of the gifts of the pandemic has been to alert us to a new mission field. We often think of mission as being something we do when we travel far away and maybe we feed hungry people or we paint a classroom, but mission is more than that. Mission is creating space for people to encounter God and the team here today will be blessed who are doing that in virtual space. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let our witness be one of radical and abundant love and courageous acts of knowing. For the Good Shepherd is ever among us, guiding, feeding, and caring. And there are other sheep, and they too will know his voice and will seek to follow. Amen. Please join me in reaffirming your faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. During, during the prayers of intercession, please enter your prayers, thanksgivings, and birthdays into the chat box to be read aloud. Let us join with all creation in praying for the good of the earth, saying, God who makes us one, hear our prayer. O oh God, we give thanks for your Holy Spirit, whose work at creation continues in us. Through Christ Jesus, you have shown your love for this earth you made. We pray that all the world may know your power and goodness. God who makes us one, hear our prayer. We especially pray for our presiding bishop, Michael, Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, our bishops, for Carrie, our priest in charge, Joe, our music minister, for our vestry, for Colleen, our preschool assistant, and for Pam, our pastoral assistant this week, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. Word of life, reveal the wonder of your, people, of your world to all people, Show us and what lives around us, over us, beneath us, within us. Enliven the church with your spirit, that we may honor your earth with responsible care. God who makes us one, hear our prayer. Almighty God, uphold our brothers and sisters who endure disasters caused by weather, war, famine, sickness, or greed. Strengthen all who are in peril. You are our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. God who makes us one, hear our prayer. Giver of all good things, bring trust and sympathy of the nations of the world. Let peacemakers reign wherever there is conflict. Give peace to leaders and hope to the poor. God who makes us one, hear our prayer. Good healer, we pray for all who are in need of comfort. Comfort those who mourn. Uphold those who are sick or holding vigil or awaiting words of hope, especially those we now silently or aloud name. For the departed, Fred Berg, Jennifer Guernsey's father, Bill, and Katie Alleman's mother, Eleanor. Trusting in your mercy, we commend to you all those we have named and those whose needs are known only to you in the, in the name of your son, Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now I will read aloud the chat prayers. For Nina, for Jim's upcoming appointments, prayers for continued healing for Liz Lincoln and for Guy Goodwin, healing prayers for Gail's brother-in-law, Poet Mills, for all those who care for the sick in body and mind, for Mary Helen's cardio procedure today, for the people of India, suffering deeply with COVID. For Pam's friend Anita, her husband Lee will be buried today. For the sole family and friends of Cork Rainey, Chuck Rimmel, and Jim Edwards. For Richard and Mary Fran's daughter-in-law, Jamie, who is nearing her birth time for a new daughter. For Kevin Carlton's birthday this Friday. For healing for Liz and Tom, Thanksgiving for a promotion at work for Meredith. Thanksgiving for her sister Megan's 29th birthday. For David on his birthday from Margaret. 
for Charles Bloom's fourth birthday, for the Crucio retreat centers and movement all around the world and our sister Catholic church, and for Liam's fifth birthday. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things and he on heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join us in the singing of hymn number 334. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. This morning, we are blessed with an abundance of birthdays to pray over. We are praying for Kevin Carlton, Megan's uh, Meredith's sister, Megan, David Kirk, Charles Bloom's fourth birthday, and Liam's fifth birthday. So please join me in praying for these beloved children of God. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may the peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. We're now going to bless our, uh, our mission team, our newest mission team here at St. Christopher's, which uh, is our virtual team. 
So I'm gonna invite our videographers, uh, Meredith and Mike Snyder to come forward so they can kind of be present in this space with us as we bless the entire team for this work that they're doing to create space so that others might encounter God in this place. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of all good gifts, we praise and thank you for the skills and talents you have showered upon your sons and daughters for the building up of your kingdom here on earth. We praise you for the gifts your spirit has inspired in these, your servants, that they may in turn place them at the service of the church. Bless Chris Irby, Deb Kim, Meredith Perry, John Olson, John Quinn, Nina Miller, Mike Snyder, Meredith Carlton, Mary Johnson, and Bob Hall, and the whole the online ministry that they have undertaken to spread the gospel of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to all who long to experience your love in their lives. We ask you to strengthen them in body and mind and spirit so that the lives they lead as your children and the work that they do in your name may give glory and praise to you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Beloved, go from here renewed and strong, knowing that the Lord is alive, almighty, and present. Look for the blessings that await you this week. Weep with those who weep. Rejoice with those who celebrate. Tell the story of hope. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.